to welcome my brother Chandler Moore. Come on. Everybody put your hands on it. Come on. Well, greetings. Uh, this is Pastor Ray with Kingdom Builders. It's such an honor to have this opportunity to I'll be able to come into your homes, your jobs, wherever you may be, just to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, today we're still in the series uh, entitled The Power of a Dominating Dime. That's right. Uh, today's message is we're moving from fruitless to fruitful. That's right. We talked about moving from being fruitless to being fruitful. I believe God wants us to produce in every area of our lives, including our finances. But there's some things that you and I must do in order to make sure that that process continues to flow in our life. So I'm excited about it. Uh, we're getting ready to get right into the word. We got worship that's going on even right now. And as we get into worship, we'll be back in just a moment uh, just to be able to share the word of the Lord with you. Take somebody, tag somebody, tell them to tune in right now to the Kingdom Experience as we prepare to deal with the power of a dominating dime. We're moving from being fruitless to being fruitful. I love you. I'll be back at the end. And until then, let's keep building the kingdom one person at a time. Let's build. Amen. You may want to go for the throne in prayer. Amen. Father God, just right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we just come to you right now, God, giving you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise, oh God. Oh God, we realize, oh God, that there's nothing like you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, we can search this world through and through, oh God. And God, I can guarantee you, God, that we still won't find nothing like you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, for you are the King of kings, oh God, you are the Lord of lords. Father God, you are the doctor with all the doctors right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we know, oh God, that you have the last say so right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we ask right now, God, you forgive us of all our sins, oh God. Oh God, anything, oh God, that we have done, oh God, anything that we have said, oh God, that was not like you, God. God, we ask right now, God, you forgive us and cleanse our hearts right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I ask right now, we continue to keep you first, oh God. Oh God, we continue, oh God, to trust in you, oh God. Oh God, we continue to lean on you, oh God. Oh God, let us not lean on our friends, oh God. Let us not lean on our mother or our father, oh God. Not even on our pastor, oh God. Oh God, let us continue to lean and trust in you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now that no one will be real and real doing, oh God. Oh God, so we say read if we faint not. God, let us not faint in the day of the person, oh God. Oh God, we know, oh God, that you have our backs, oh God. Oh God, we know that you haven't brought us this far to leave us right now. And Father God, we just thank and we praise you on today. Oh God, we thank right now, God, for your healing power right now, God. Oh God, we thank right now for keeping us safe for all throughout the week. Oh God, we thank you, God, for keeping your angels kept around the battles right now in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we ask right now, God, you have your way to serve today, God. But God, we're not here for form nor fashion, oh God. Oh God, we live here to lift up your holy name right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask right now, God, we pray, oh God, for the angel of this house, oh God. 
Rest right now. You continue to keep them covered right now, God, under your blood, oh God. Continue to protect them right now. Give them a word for your people right now in the name of Jesus. And we pray, oh God, for our first lady, lay them in, oh God. Continue to give her the strength, oh God, to carry on, oh God. Continue to bless her right now, God, in the entire red family. And God, I pray for everybody, oh God, that is in this sanctuary. And everybody that is on the way, everybody, oh God, that is committed to the KDB, oh God. Oh God, we pray right now you continue to bless them, oh God. Continue to protect them and lead and guide us. And we thank you, oh God, we praise you, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And in your son Jesus in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen.
Come on, if that's your testimony, do you mind resting on your feet with us in this presence? Come on, I need everybody that's physically able, if you don't mind resting on your feet with us. The song says we want his spirit to break out. We want his spirit to break out. We want him to break some walls down. I don't know about you, but whenever the spirit of the Lord breaks out, it not only breaks things down, but it helps enable us to be able to deal with what we have to deal with on a daily basis. We can't do that within our own strength. We can't do that within our own power. But I believe I'm talking to a few people that understand I need the spirit of God in every area of my life. I don't want to live. I don't want to move without having God's presence felt in my life. Come on. Would you look at somebody and just tell them, say neighbor, his presence is more than life. I want you to take a moment and think about somebody that's not able, <clears throat> that's not able to be here. Somebody's longing to be able to feel his presence. Somebody wish they could feel his presence. But we don't want to take this moment for granted. Not a second, not a day. Not a minute we don't want to take for granted. That God smiled on us. Minister Jimmy said earlier that somebody's wearing the same clothes. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. But the fact that he allowed us to see another day, we owe him the fruit of our lips. Come on, in a posture of thanksgiving, would you just lift your hands? Father, we honor you for this day. Before we move further, God, we want to say thank you. Even for giving us what we didn't deserve, thank you for giving us life. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to see the dawning of a new day. Father, we want to honor you through everything that's said and through everything that's done. Don't let our coming be in vain. But God, garrison our hearts today. Place us on the same wavelength as you. We speak healing right now to our mothers to those unspoken requests. Father, right now we speak healing to Mother Thomas' body. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Father, you said healing is the children's bread. Thank you for keeping Mother Baker, Mother Lewis, Mother Stewart, Mother Rember, keeping them in good health. Father, we declare right now by faith that the manifested presence of your healing power will be, will be felt right where they are. Satan, we counter your assignments today. We take authority over everything that's not like God. We pull it down today. Father, we give you glory right now. Father, let our coming today, let it be fruitful today. Bless us, God. Enlighten us. Encourage us inform us father we'll take the word and we'll apply it to our lives i'm asking now that you stand in my body think with my mind and speak with my mouth that that you would have us to hear today let this word charge us let this word challenge us but more importantly god let this word change us we give you glory honor and praise it's in your son jesus the christ name we pray let every glad heart say amen would you look at somebody that you're standing beside and just tell them, I want God's presence to be felt in every area of my life. Come on, say it again. I want God's presence to be felt in every area of my life. Listen, grab your copy of the word of the Lord. Mickey, will you come? Yeah. Grab your copy of the word of the Lord. Rest on your feet with us. Thank you. If you did not get your dime, those of you that have your dimes, let me see your hand. Hold your hand up if you have your dimes. 
Come on, matter of fact, hold your hand up with your dime in it. This is how we keep in a record. All right, I see Shayla. I see Sister Shayla. You got your dime that you got the first time. Let me see it. Let me see it. Let me see it. <clears throat> Come on, hold your hand up. All right, everybody that, for those that's been here thus far, since we've been giving out the challenge, you haven't missed a Sunday since the first one. Let me see both of your hands. You haven't missed a Sunday. Let me see both of your hands. All right, I'm just trying to keep tally. One, two. <clears throat> Come on, if you hadn't missed a Sunday. Three, four, five. All right, we doing good. 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 That's good. <clears throat> That's good. Come on, you can put your hands down. If you don't have one, if you did not receive a dime yet, uh, this is your first time or the second Sunday you didn't get your dime. Hold your hand up, Sister Mickey is going to pass one out to you. We passed one about three weeks ago. I want everybody to get one. I want you to gave the challenge to keep this. Hold it until the very last message in this series. Come on, hold your hand up. I see some, a hand over here. If you didn't receive your dime, hold your hand up. Sister Mick is going to pass it out to you. I need you to get it, I need you to get it. All right, <clears throat> and if you're here, but you just forgot it, you don't have it with you, let me see your hand. All right, all right, one, two, three, good. I love Kingdom Builders, we honest. We honest, good, 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 good. All right, all right, all right. Come on, we're going right back into it. This is our, I think it's the third one in this series, The Power of a Dominating Dime. We're still here, and, and I want to thank God for you because I told you up front for the next several weeks what we will be teaching so that you wouldn't be surprised. And uh, to know that you're coming back week after week lets me know that you're serious about growing and you're serious about your financial peace and having God bless in every area of your life, including when it comes to my finances. And so it means a lot. It means we are right where we need to be. So grab your copy of the word of the Lord. Would you help me as you're getting your copy of the word of the Lord? Give thanks and honor to the fragrance of the house. Would you help me celebrate Lady Wren this morning? <clears throat> we honor you this morning to our executive pastor and minister Stephanie. They are back in the house. We thank God for them this morning. Amen. Thank God. Uh, Minister Jimmy, his wife, and our administrator. <clears throat> Give God praise for each of you to our praise team. Can we celebrate them? I appreciate them so much. Amen. To, she just had a birthday to our senior mother. Just turned 21 all over again. Mother Stewart is here. And uh, it's just so good to have her with us with so much going on uh, the bible is right when it says the lord will satisfy you with long life which means you can live until you're satisfied <clears throat> and i take that word literally amen come on get your copy of the word of the lord it's going to be on the screen for you turn with us to galatians chapter 6 <clears throat> verse number 7 this is the new king james version listen at what it says do not be deceived God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Come on, let's read that together. Come on, Galatians 6, 7. This is the New King James Version. If you will, let's read it together. Ready? Read. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will... Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Excuse me. Another scripture that's going to be up there for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 10 through 12. The New Living Translation says, For God is the one who provides seed for the sower. There it is. Seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. He is the one that provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. I want to talk. This is another lesson or part three in this series 
the power of a dominating dime. And if we were to put a handle on this one, I want to talk about from fruitless to fruitful. Come on, look at somebody and tell them I'm moving from being fruitless to being fruitful. Come on, look at somebody. I need you to look at them. Open your mouth. Talk to them this morning. Tell them I'm moving from being fruitless to being fruitful. Uh, there, there are four big points that I want to make during this series that I started off saying, and it's every lesson. Number one, here it is. It's going to be on the screen for you. This is the whole premise for the lesson. Number one, I want to encourage present tithers. I want to encourage present tithers. Why is that important? Because sometimes when we tithe and we've been doing it, sometimes systematically, we can get into this thing where we don't really expect to receive. We're just doing it because out, we've been taught or out of routine. Let me say that again. Sometimes you can get into something, a place where you're just doing it out of routine or or but there's no expectation attached to it. So I want to encourage. I don't want to just give. I say this often whenever we give. We don't just give money, but we ought to give our seed an assignment. Give your seed an assignment. So one of the goals is to encourage present tithers because there are times that we get weary. There are times that uh, uh, sometimes we feel like, wait a minute, is it really worth it? Should I keep doing this? So I want to encourage present tithers. And number two, I want to convince former tithers to begin again. That, that's the whole point, to convince those that were tithing that stopped for whatever reason or another to begin again. Here's the third one. It's on the screen for you to produce hundreds of new tithers through us. By our testimony, somebody will see what God has done through us for us and it will motivate them to begin tithing. And here is the fourth one to increase our giving so we can give even more. Come on, let's get into this word. It says second Corinthians chapter nine, verse 10 through 12, the New Living Translation for God is the one who provides. There it is. Seed for the sower or the farmer and then bread to eat in the same way. He will he will provide. Listen at this and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Now, let's pause there because look at what it says for it is who? For God, everybody shout God. God. God is the one that provides. So can I, let me just do this real, it won't be on, your, on the screen for you, but let me say it this way. God cannot expect something from me that he's not, has not already provided for me. What are you saying, Pastor? He will not tell me to tithe if he hadn't first given me resources. He can't expect me to bring him a gift if he hasn't first provided. In Genesis, the word says God has given us every herb bearing seed. So not only do we reap what we sow, sometimes we reap before we sow. Because God gave Adam every herb bearing seed before he sowed anything. So he gives it to us and then he requires or asks something from us. So remember now, God will never ask me to do something that he has not already first positioned or provided for me. Number one. So it is God. It is God who provides seed for the farmer and then gives bread to the eater. Now, look at this. Verse number 11. It won't be on the screen, but I want to read it for you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way. So that you can always be generous. Now, be honest with me. Is it anybody other than me that you you've been in places or you've been around people and you wanted to give something, but you just didn't have it? You, you have you ever, on, be honest, you ever been there? Now, I'm talking to givers now. You, I know, I'm not just talking about in church. You ever been around people or you've heard of good causes and things going on? And I was just at the store the other day and a, and a lady that was in front of me, she said, uh, uh, she, she told the, uh, the young lady that was ringing her up. She says, uh, take that off. Take that off. And, and, and the lady took it off. She said, uh, yeah, take that off, too. And she said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some on my car and I'm going to put some in cash. And I was behind her. I was listening to it. 
But then I was on, on my Bluetooth talking at the same time because now she had already paid for it and left out. But when she left out, I thought about it. I said, man, that was an opportunity for me to help step in and assist. And I've done it before, but to step in and I missed that moment. But here it is. I was busy with something else that distracted me. But then I thought about it later. That was an opportunity to sow a seed into her life. She obviously needed what she got. But when she got up there, she was trying to juggle. How can I take care? So she was putting the more important things in, in, in place first and the lesser things she put away. Here's what he says. Look at this. You'll be generous so that you'll be able to give to every good work. Givers feel bad or uncomfortable when situations arise and they don't have anything to give toward. This ain't for everybody. Because some people, I pray they're not here today, or I pray they're not watching at home. Some people don't don't it don't bother them when they don't have to give. They can care less. I'm just enjoying the ride. But givers really feel uncomfortable when they don't have something to give. Because I want to give. When, when you hear a testimony about somebody saying, listen, I want to be able to go to school, but I need $250 for a book. And I, I think I'm just going to have to sit this class out. Real givers get upset. They get angry. 250 they want to go in and see what they can do to help. They want to try to help somebody. He says, I'm going to make sure that you will always have something. Here is why. Look at verse number 12. So two good things will result as a result of giving. The needs of believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks unto God. So what happens when we give? Here it is. Write this down. It won't be on your notes, but write it down. Make a mental note of it. When we give... People will give God the glory. Think about it. If you bless somebody and you bless them and they're not a believer, the first thing they're going to attach to it is that was God. I don't know you from a can of paint, but I just want to bless you. Let me pay your power bill this month. And they will turn around and thank God because he's the one that made a way. Come on, come on. Here it is. We have made sometimes this scripture more about getting than we have about giving. When in reality, God says it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And the church got quiet. Let me say that again. And God says it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And the church got quiet. Let me try this out. They get it. They wait. God says it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Yeah, this is what I need to be. All right. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Everybody don't mind. All of us like to receive. Oh, yes, I love to receive. Let me ask a young person. Any young person I can use? Come on, I need a young person. Or a youth or a young adult that I can use? Who, who, who can I use? Who can I use? I just need to ask you one question. I just want to get your honesty. That's all. Oh, who can I use? Shayla? Okay, good. What holiday is coming up that you know is going to be a time that you're going to get to receive some, Shayla? Huh? Halloween. Halloween? Yeah. Now, what are you expecting to receive? Candy. Candy. She started with something immediate. Anybody looking for something in the future? Let me find another, another young person. Anybody? Uh, she says Halloween. She know that's real immediate. She's looking for candy. All right. Alana, what, what, which one coming up that you're expecting to receive something? My birthday. That's a holiday for her. She want everything shut down. It's all about me that day. You, you know why? We don't mind receiving and nothing's wrong with that. But here is what God says. It is more blessed to give. Than it is to receive. Jesus, listen to this, y'all. He's teaching on the Mount of Olives, a city that overlooks Jerusalem. And he's teaching to his disciples and he gives them this principle. Jesus asked them this question. Are you a giver? I know you don't mind receiving, but the question is, are you a giver? Come on, write this down. Write this down. It's going to be on the screen for you. Here's the kingdom nugget for today. God wants us to produce. God wants us to produce. Come on, look at it. Verse number six, uh, Galatians chapter six. The one who is taught in the word is to share good things to the one that teacheth. Come on, I need you to see this. The one who is taught in the word should share all good things to the one who teaches. Now, 
this particular scripture is talking about the leaders at the time or those that sold through, through the word. Let me make this sense, make sense to you, okay? Uh, uh, th this is not what pastor's talking about for right now, but let me give you some context to it. Paul was teaching them, and Paul says, if I sold unto you spiritual things, it is only right for me to meet, reap of your carnal things. Let, let, let me give it to you. All right, let, let's make it sense. Sister Kayla, hypothetical, comes to me and says, Pastor, I need you to be in agreement with me that God blessed me to be able to get this business going. I said, okay, Sister Kayla, we're going to unite together. I'm going to pray with her. I'm going to unite my faith. We're going to believe God that doors are going to open. She's going to get the business up off the ground. She's got the faith to do it. And then all of a sudden she comes back and she testifies. God made a way. He blessed me. I got the business going. Here it is. I need you. I need your spiritual antennas. She gets the business going. It is only right that Sister Kayla souls back into that word. And the church got real quiet. I need to come down now. I need to come down. Let me walk down. So I'm going to change today. L listen at this. Come on. Y'all may have to walk with me. Sister. Work with me. Sister. L listen at this. If the word that I spoke into her life caused her faith to grow and she increased financially, Paul says that I should reap of that. Because it was the word that I spoke. The prayer that I pray that gave her the faith to believe God for what God had for her. And here is what Paul says. Paul says, if we sow unto you spiritual things, we should reap of your carnal things. Here is what he teaches them. Don't be deceived. God ain't mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you, he's saying. If I sow something spiritual and you increase financially, you should give me something. Let, let me let's do this. Let's do it this way. Uh, uh, anybody ever been to a teaching class or or training or, or any kind of extracurricular anything outside of what you do for your job, but it was just an enrichment for you personal enrichment? Or, or have, have you ever have you ever done yoga or signed up for a, a class? Anybody ever signed up for a gym class? All right, wrong one. Okay, all right, Sister Quita. All right, cut. Good. All right, you, you signed up for how much did they charge you, Sister Quita? Yeah, how much? How much was the class? Just give me a rough amount. $30, okay. Why do you think they charge $30? They want to pay for a time. Ooh, that's good. She, 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 she said, listen to this. She says they charge $30 because they wanted her to pay for their time. Why didn't they say, we're going to let you work out, come when you want to, take the, uh, do the regiment, and if you see the results in six months, then you can give us some later. No, no, they, they didn't do that. You know why they didn't do that? Because they know us. Don't know. Let me give you another. Y'all don't like it. Look, you want to hear this. Uh, I don't care how much money you make on your job. There's an there's a uncle that all of us got named Uncle Sam. Can I tell you something, Brother Allen? I like Brother Allen. I trust Brother Allen. I've had Brother Allen at my house before to do some things. I trust Brother Allen. But you know what? Uncle Sam don't trust Brother Allen. You know what he said? He said, oh, Brother Allen, I know you're working at the waterworks now, but before you get your check, I'm going to get mine. Because I know what's going to happen. You're going to get yours on Friday, and you're going to say, oh, I'll get back with you next week. <laughs> he said, no, I'm going to get mine off the top. So, so here's what Paul says. Paul said, don't be deceived. God ain't more whatever I sow. He said, I should reap. This is not a pastoral teaching, but I want to give you the principle of it. He's basically saying, if we sow spiritual things, we should reap up your carnal things. Because it's only right. But whenever I don't do it, he says, you're making a mockery of God. But remember, whatever you sow is going to come back. Can I talk to us? If I want mercy, I've got to show mercy. If I want somebody to be nice to my, ch my child, I've got to be nice to somebody else's child. If I want somebody to love me, I've got to learn to love somebody else. It's not just about giving. Listen to this. Whatever you sow. Look at somebody and just ask them, do you like what you're reaping? Tell them if you don't like it, tell them change what you're sowing. I'm going to say that again. Somebody didn't say it. Ask them, do you like what you're reaping? If not, tell them change what you're sowing. 
come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. So God wants us to produce. Here it is. Go to the next. Here it is. If he wants us to produce, look at this. Principle number one, write it down. I need you to get this. We should be giving up something for something greater. Jesus. Lord. You always give up something less for something greater. Come on, here it is, here it is. Come on, put it on the screen. Uh, come on, 1 Corinthians 9, verse number 11. I need y'all to get this. Look at what it says. If we sow spiritual things into you, is it too much if we reap up your... Everybody that has a pastor, uh, 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 I'm talking, about, this is not a pastoral message, but it's a part of it. I got to give it to you, okay? He says, if we, Paul says, I'm not going to put it just me, if anybody sows, if Elder Freeman gets up and ministers, if Minister Jimmy gets up and ministers, he says, if we saw to you spiritual things, what is wrong with us reaping up your carnal things? Ah, I always give up something less for something more. Anybody ever bought anything out of a vending machine? How much did you spend, Mickey, on a vending machine? How much? 150, 150. Okay, what did you buy? Chips. chips. All right, good. She bought some chips for 150. Now, listen at this. Do you think you could have got those chips cheaper somewhere else? She says, you know, yeah, all of us know. We know. We could have got them cheap. We could have got them cheap. Here it is. But at the time, that 150 wasn't more important than the chips worth it. Mm -mm. I'll tell you this way. Sister so, Tiffany, the car you drive, what kind of car do you drive? And Infinity? Okay, could you get a car that's much cheaper than that one? Of course. She's driving that car because she wants to. This is it. I need y'all to get this. Because we always give up something less for something great. It was more what Mickey had, but it didn't compare to the chip she desired. So she was willing to give up what she had, which could have bought a, problem, a few bags of chips, but at the time, she saw the chips as something greater than the 150. So Stephanie could be driving a Toyota Camry at 05 if she wanted to. But the infinity, whatever that QX, whatever it is, is much greater and it's better than what she could get for something less. We always give up something less for something greater. Uh, they don't like that, but let's go to the next scripture. Let's go to the next one. Come on, look at it. I need you to get this. Look at it again. 1 Corinthians 9, verse number 11. Look at the New Living Translation. I, I need y'all to get this one. Since we have planted spiritual seed among you, uh oh, I like this. Aren't we entitled to a harvest of physical food and drink? Oh. Woo! Paul talking head. Paul says, here's what Paul's saying. I got a job. I'm a tent maker. So, so I, I, I got money. I don't need your money. Paul said, I'm good. But I want to give you the principle that since I labor and spend time in the word and I sow into you the word, shouldn't y'all make me a fish sandwich every now and then? Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with me getting a fago every now and then? Paul is trying to teach them the principle that whatever somebody sows into your life, they should be able to read. Ah, boy, this is good. Yeah. Oh, come on, go to the next one, Sister Matthews. I don't think they like that one. Here it is. Let's go back to it. Galatians, there it is. Oh, this my version, y'all. Message Bible says, don't be misled. Come on, look at somebody. Put that, put that sanctified fighting finger in their face. Tell them, don't you be misled. Come on in, dear. He said, no one makes a fool of God. Ooh, look at somebody tell nobody. nobody. Come on, say it in your key sweat. Key sweat for us. Ain't nobody. nobody. Uh, no, come on back, y'all. Come on back. <laughs> nobody makes a fool of God. Whatever a person plants, he's going to harvest. Oh, the message Bible makes it plain. Now look at it. The one that plants selfishness can tell somebody, you're going to reap selfishness. Let me pause right there and stop right there for a moment. Because if I plant selfish, y'all know what selfishness is? It's all about me. Selfishness is I want me taken care of. Uh -huh. Selfishness is I'm at the grocery store. I like hot potato chips. Later in, want some skins. And she tell me, but I get the hot potato chips and I don't get her no skins. It's all about me today. Anybody know anybody like that? 
Selfishness. Selfishness. Listen, he said, whoever plays selfishness is going to reap selfishness. Whoever ignores the needs of others, they are ignoring the needs of God. A harvest of crops, not that they won't reap that, they're going to reap a harvest of weeds. And I'm not talking about the kind you smoke. Look, look at it. Don't be misled. Whatever a person sows, that's, that's what they're going to reap. Come on, Pastor. What do you say? He says, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Because every seed produces after its kind. Yes. I can't sow foolishness and expect people to be straight up with me. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I can't so listen at this bitterness and expect somebody to talk in, in good faith. Listen, here's what he says. Whatever you so tell somebody whatever you so, whatever you so. The, the question is, the question we have to ask is, what are we sowing? Because if I'm reaping certain things and I don't like it, the only way to change it is I got to change the seed I'm planting. If everybody being nasty to you, change the seeds you're planting. I, I was, uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna say that. Come on, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go. A uh, seed produces after its own kind. Three things, here it is, three things, and I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Principle number two, write this down, write this down. Oh, this is one of the best ones right here. You can't get fruit without a tree. And you can't get a tree without seed. Well, come on, y'all. You better pray. You better pray. Can, can I say this? You can't get fruit without trees. But you cannot get a tree without a seed. How many like fruit? Be honest. How many like fruit? How many like fruit? How many like fruit? Can I tell you something? Although we like fruit, when you eat fruit, what do you do with the seed? Most people, if you ride down 20, you can be there too. Take that seed, you hit the window, most people just toss it out the window. We don't eat that particular seed. Now, how many of you like watermelon? Yes, sir. Sometimes, not everybody. What do you do with the seeds? <laughs> See, some of y'all, you want to be booty messages and spit it out. So, I know some of y'all eat seed, eat the watermelon seed. <laughs> huh? Swallow the white ones? Listen to this. He says, he says <laughs> you, you can't get fruit without trees, but you can't get trees without seeds. You got to see. Here it is. Y'all ready? Come on. I, 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 need, I need somebody that will help me. I need somebody that will help me. That's got their dime. You got your dime? Come on. You got your dime? Come here. Who, who got their dime? Come on. Come on. If you got your dime, come on. Quick. If you got your dime, come on. Quick. I need you if you, if you got your dime. All right. Come on. Come on. All right. Cool. All right. Come on. Bring your dime to the shade. Come on. She's going to help you. You can't get fruit without trees, but you can't get trees without seed. Come on. Say it again. You can't get fruit without trees, and you can't get trees without seed. Right, come on. She, she got her down. All right, so here's here's our work. Here's our work. Here's our work. All right. I got some warnings. All right, so, so here's where we're going. So God says she's got her down. Show me your down. Show me your down. Right, this is her seed. But what she wants it is something greater than that. That's good. Huh, let, let, let's play around with the polo box here. Let's, let's talk. Right, let's All right, so look, what she has, what she has is a seed. But what she wants is fruit. Yes. But she can't get the fruit without first planting the seed. Now, here's the thing. What Shayla can do is, because that's hers, she can eat the seed. She can save the seed and buy something in candy land with the seed. The, the issue with that is, whatever she do with the seed, that's it. When you eat the seed, that's all it'll ever be. Oh, God, I hope you get this. If she eat the you can't do that. Uh, say right there, say it. Uh, Mickey, let me ask you this. Uh, she'll help me. Uh, the, the dollar fifty that you had, when you spend it on the chips, what else did that dollar fifty do for you? Nothing. It's good. It's good. Because once you spend it, it's over. Oh God, I hope y'all get this. Once you spend the seed, that's the end of it. So Shayla has seed, but she wants fruit because she likes fruit. So guess what she does? She so 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 you see. Boom, yes. Right, she sold a seed. So here it is. Come on, let's kind of she sold a seed. Here it is. I want you to guess it. That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, 
that's seven, that's eight, that's nine, that's ten. That's ten. All right, good. Now, do you like the fruit? She liked the fruit. Good. She liked the fruit. So guess what? Now, what will you do the next time you get an opportunity to sow a seed? Boom! Before she went home That's it. to go get a Prada purse. <laughs> Before she went home to play Xbox. Yes. Before she went to Candyland. Yes. She said, I like this kind of harvest, yes. this fruit. Yes. Let me go ahead and try this again. So here it is. So she do it again. Because she understands one thing, if the dime produced this, yeah. Yeah. what happens if I give something else? Because whatever I do, remember now, every seed produces after its own kind. She can't sow that and reap. Give me, give me. She can't sow that and then reap this. Come on, I'm going to give you 10 of these. Give me 10 of these. No, 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 no. It, it don't work like that. Whatever you sow. Come on, it's word. You can't so oh God. Come on now. Listen to this. The reason I say it all the time, and I'm gonna do it next year. Y'all hold me to it. Put it down. I'm gonna get it next year. I said it so much. I want this range roll. This is the one I want. This is here it is. Personally, from the church, a church family, we have given away four or five vehicles. But Lady Reed and I personally, without people knowing it, have done at least six. So you can't give away a vehicle and somebody just turn around and give your bicycle back. No, no, no. Whatever you sow, oh God, help me talk. Whatever you sow, God says that's what you're going to reap. So if you sow money, money has to come back to you. If you sow a kind word, a kind word has to come back to you. If you if you sow stinginess, people are gonna be stingy with you. If you if you sow down, here it is. Whatever you sow, it's got to come back up. Why does it have to come back up, Pastor? Because God will not be more. Showed it. So look, she says, this, this thing is working. I got that. So guess what? She builds it again. Let's get it off again. Here's another one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. How, how does that feel? How does, does it okay, how does that feel? Good. Oh, you know, you know, you know, you know, here it is. Now, now she has more than what she had yes. off of this one seed. Now here's what Shayla can do. She can say, I'm good. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm good. I thank God for that. Y'all, God has been good. I got my harvest. Now. Show me your harvest. Show me your harvest. Oh, I got my harvest now. She walked up here with a dime. Oh, but she got a harvest. Now, now Shayla can go back to her seat. She can sit down. She she she, she can sit down. Oh, she can stay up. What, what you want to do now? What you... <laughs> Y'all miss it. Here it is. Shayla recognizes this thing is working. <laughs> This dime and gave me this. Why in the world would I go back to some friends and all they want to do is text and tweet? Oh, well, why do I want to go back to people that all they want to do is talk about other people when what I'm doing is working? Yeah. Why, would, what, why would I listen at what the person on my left says when they're still in the same position but what I'm doing is growing where I am? Yeah. So guess what she does? She gives it again. So here it is. There's one. There's two. There's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, there's seven, there's eight, there's nine, there's ten. Now, Shayla got another harvest. She's feeling good. Oh, she's happy. She can go back to her seat and sit down and be good for the day. But you staying here? What? Oh, it, it's working? Shayla to figure something out. But what Shayla figured out is, here it is. No matter how much you give, you can't be God's giving. Yes, yes. Shayla tapped into something. I think you can I show you something? What Shayla understands is I got my sister. I love my sister. I got my sister's best friend back there. I love her. Oh yeah, I love it. I love my dad sitting over there. I love my mama doing her part. But see, they not doing what God doing for me right now. I, I, I can't get caught up with my sister right now. I got, I, well, hey, I'm talking to somebody. You've got to figure out when things get to working for you. Uh, 
let me pause right here. I'm going to find some real people. I'm going to find some real people. Anybody ever been to the casino and you hit on a machine? Let, don't raise your hand. Just kind of wink your eye at me. Let me know who you are. Uh, you ever hit on a machine? Now listen, if the machine has been hot for you and you know if the machine is working something, do you get up off that machine? Look, oh, I see Sister Kayla sitting there. She's oh, no, 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 no. We, we, we stay right here. You, you, you tell the servers when they walk by, bring me two of those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ice walls. Bring me two of those. I'm not getting off this machine. You got to use the bathroom. You sitting there, got to move. You got to go. You ain't moving because you found something that works. Can I talk to us? When you find something that works and that source is God, you don't leave him to talk to anybody else. It doesn't matter what they're showing you over there. It doesn't matter what they're saying over there. You understand that was one time in my life I was fruitless. All I had was one seed. And as a result of what I'm doing, God keeps on blessing me. Why would I stop what I'm doing to go and see about somebody else? Look at somebody and tell them, it's my fruitful season. Oh, no, here it is. Shayla has caught on to it. So she gives again. So guess what? Because the word says you can't be God's gift. And because you can't be God's giving, no matter how you try, God says, I'll keep giving more to you. So now that you got that shame, she, she, she good now. Because she wasn't expecting God to do all of that. She was good. So now she's getting ready to go back to her seat. She, you, you good? You good? natural. She said, oh, yeah. uh, no, I, I think there's something else still here. She said, she, see, the problem is sometimes we don't see everything that God has for us. But y'all need to open your eyes and look at somebody and just tell them open your eyes. See, the reason you don't give with expectation is because you think this is all God got. But my God has a catalog of battles and heals. Would you look at somebody on either side and Because if God is blessing my neighbor, he's in the neighborhood. 
you a little something else. Guess what you've been paid for? You don't mind clapping your hands. You don't mind working. You don't mind letting the world know that I serve a faithful God. If you trust him with the damn, everything gonna work out. You got to be truthful where you are. Nobody open up your mouth and shout, it's my fruitful season. Now, Shayla, she can stay up here or she can go to her seat. Yes. He goes, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I ain't God, Shayla. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm church. I'm, I'm done. Oh, oh, oh. Come back, Shayla. Come back, Shayla. Oh, God. See, see, see. You see, y'all missing some of these principles. Just cause one source run out. When you trust the source, you'll touch some other people to bless you. She know about college. She's, she, she, she's seen some people play some beard weeds and some stuff. She, yeah, yeah. Look at Dad. Look at, look at Dad holding. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a poker face. See, see, see. What I found out is, is you learn when you learn the secret to something, you don't stop it. If it's working. I used to hear Michael Jordan, he would say, well, what, why? all Michael Jordan do is he go to the same side. He says, why would I change up if they can't stop this? If what you're doing is working, why do something else? <laughs> so, so here it is. So, so she sold off of one C. Everybody shout one C. One C. So, so one C produced that. Come on, I need you to get this. So here it is. You can't get fruit without trees. You can't get a tree without a seed. Come on, here it is. Principle number three. Here it's going to be on the screen for you. I need y'all to get this. Not only that, but here it is. Principle number three. You ready for it? Uh, sow your seed. Don't eat your seed. <laughs> is, Brother Allen, so many people, when they get the harvest, instead of sowing back into the God that blessed them, they eat it all. But remember what Mickey said, when you eat the chips, that's all it's going to ever be. God wants us to experience life, and he wants us to have some things, but he don't want the things that he give us to have us to the point to where we get consumed with it, and we eat it all instead of sowing back. Oh, sow your seed, don't eat your seed. Come on, listen, let me do it practically. I need y'all to get this. Pastor, how can I tell if what I have is my harvest or if it's my seed. Here it is. Here is the litmus test as best I can give it to you. The check that you just got on your job, is that all the money you will ever need? No. If your answer is no, God is saying that is not your entire harvest. Use some of it as seed. Because when you get your real harvest, that's going to set you up for the rest of your life. But if it's not all, here's what I do. When I look at that check, uh, well, do I think I'm going to need something else in a couple of months? Uh, yeah. So all of this is not my harvest. I may take some of it do some things I want to do, but I understand the principle. It's seed. Come on, look at somebody and tell them, don't eat your seed. Sow your seed. 
Well, what do you do? You eat bread. But you don't eat the seed. Yeah. Oh, they didn't like that one, Sister Matthews. Let's go to the next one. Here's your kingdom thought. Because somebody's saying it's pastor's fault. No, no, no. Here it is. Right. Look at it. I need you to get it. You determine how blessed you are. I need you to get this. Come on, look at it. Come on, write it down. Screenshot it. You determine how blessed you are. Here is my last scripture and I am done. Job 22 and 28. The New American said in the Bible. Come on, there it is on the screen. Come on, I need y'all to get this. Here it is. Look at what he says. You will also decree a thing. Yes. And it will be established for you. <laughs> and the light will shine on your way. Come on, let's read it together. I need you to put emphasis on everything that's in, in yellow. Well, here it is. You ready? You. Everybody shout you. Yeah. Shout me. Yeah. Look, I will also decree a thing. Here it is. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. And it will be established. Uh -huh. so, so what do you say? Whatever I say has to happen. Yeah. So can I talk to us? Even if you ever, if you, even if you left KBB, if you left Kingdom Builders, the same principle work wherever you go. If you are a tither, nobody can stop the blessings of God from flowing in your life but you. I don't care what pastor says. If I say I don't ever want to see you blessed, I don't ever want to see you happy, I don't want to ever see you drive something new. If you are in a financial covenant with God, I can't stop the blessings from flowing in your life. Come on, look at somebody tell me, I'm determined I how blessed I am financially. He said, you shall decree it, and it will be established and the light will shine on your ways. So whatever I speak out of my mouth, I shall have it. What are you saying, Pastor? If I want to change what I've been reaping, I've got to learn to change what I've been sowing. And sometimes the seed starts in our mouth. Can I talk to us? Even if you don't have a dime, start talking like you got money. I'm just in between right now, but God, I'm telling you, I'm blessed and highly favored. I got money all around me. My kids got more money than I would have. My family is doing. You got to start speaking those things that be not as though they were. Talk, faith, talk. Don't just talk junk. My question to you is. Are you in a fruitful season or are you in a fruitless season? You can have whatever you declare, whatever you decree. Y'all ready for it? Y'all ready for it? Y'all ready for it? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Y'all ready for it? Whatever you say shall come to pass. Come on, I'm done. I need everybody standing. Everybody standing. I'm moving from fruitless to being fruit. Oh, can I say it again? I'm moving from fruitless to being fruitful. How do you do that, Pastor? I do that by understanding the principle. And that is seed time and harvest. Come on, look at somebody and tell them it's fruitful season in my life. Come on, say it again. It's fruitful season in my life. How, how does fruitful season work? I understand the principle that I must sow into seasons. Sow where I'm going and not just be comfortable where I am. Can I say this to us? Come on, look at somebody. Look at them. Come on, put your hand on that shoulder. Put your hand on that shoulder. Just tell them, say, neighbor, it's your fruitful season. Come on, say it again, neighbor. It's your fruitful season. No, no, speak it into their spirit. Tell them, say, neighbor, it's your fruitful season. They didn't like that. Come on, find somebody else. Tell them, neighbor, it's your fruitful season. Come on, I need you to get it. Come on, say, neighbor, you're in a fruitful season. But what, what is a fruitful season, Pastor Rand? It's where everything I touch flourishes. It's where everything I touch begins to grow. It's when I start thinking things, when I start believing things are possible, things begin to take place and happen in my life. I'm in my fruitful season. No more lacking. No more deficit. 
Come on, no more red. No more delinquent letters. No more being in a place where I can't afford this or afford that. God, I'm a tithe. God, I'm a giver. You promise that you give seed to the soul and bread to the eater. Come on, right where you are, would you just lay your hand on somebody's shoulder? Lay your hand on somebody's shoulder. Just tell them, say, neighbor, you're in a fruitful season. You've got to be responsible in this particular season. Come on, tell them about one of the person. Tell them, say, neighbor, you can't eat your seed. You've got to sow your seed. Why, why, why do you do that? Why do you do that? Minister Jimmy, will you bring the ladder? I'm done. Bring the ladder, please. Fruitful seasons demand a certain level of trust. It demands a certain level of accountability that's built up over time when God has proven himself in your life. It puts you in a place where you don't mind trusting him. You don't mind going above and beyond. I'm done. Where's JC? Where's JC? Listen, when you're in a fruitful season, come here, Jay. Come help me. Come help me, Jay. Come help me, Jay. When you're in a fruitful season, when you're in a fruitful season, come on, Mr. Jimmy, come on. Come on, just stand on this top right here. Come on. That's right. That's good. That's good. Come on. Look at that. Look at that. Look. Turn around. Turn around. Away. Come on. That's good. I just tell him to jump there. Go sit up there. Get up there. Are you ready? Get up there. I just tell him to jump there. They ain't gonna catch you. Just tell him to jump. Get up here, get up here. He know it. Dad has proven himself to him. Go up, take another step up. Take another step up. JJ, no man. Come on. Tell me, jump. Boom. He know daddy got it. He ain't worried about that. It's fun, but Jay, come on. Come on, let's go up one more step. Yeah, Jay, no man. I trust daddy on the small level. Yes, no, no, no. Now I'm ready to trust him on something bigger. Come on, I got you, Jay. Turn around. You good, you good. Just watch it. Jump, daddy. You believe you believe you're gonna catch him? All right, jump there. Let me see you jump if you believe you're gonna catch him. Oh, he don't mind. He don't mind. They got it. Come on, Jay. We going all the way up. We going up. We going up. We going up. Let's go. Let's go. One more, Jay. One more. One more. You got it. Yeah. Just turn around. I got you. Watch your head. You good? You good? Just keep your head like that. All right. Hold on. Stay like that, Jay. Stay like that. You good? Watch it. Watch it. Step back, Dad. Step back, Dad. <laughs> I'm good, good, good. You believe Dad can catch it? You believe you gonna catch it? Watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head. I don't know if some man wants to pay the insurance. Watch your head. Are right, you ready, Jay? You gonna jump? Watch your head. Go ahead, Dad. Go ahead, Dad. Oh, that's my guy. Got it, got it. Come on, Jay. Come on back up here, Dave. Come on. No, you good. Stay right there. Come on, Sister Stephanie. Come on. Here it is. <laughs> Jay. Listen to this. James trusted daddy on the small level. Yes. He knew daddy would catch him. My Lord. He trusted him on the second level. He knew daddy would catch him. Even when it was uncomfortable for James as he's holding on himself, he still know daddy has proven yes. himself. No, no, no matter what situation I'm in, dad, daddy proved to me that, that, that he'll catch me. And he was able to jump out because daddy proved himself on ground level zero. So Jay can trust him. I really believe Jay can be on the top if yes. daddy say jump, Jay can take off. Yes. Cause he know daddy has proven himself. Then he will take care of me. Come on, sister. Here it is. Because that's Jay. Look at somebody tell him childlike faith. Come on, sister. Come on, I'm walking with you. Come on, just hold a hand up. Come on, sister. I got you. Come on, I got you. You don't trust big dad? Come on, big dad. <laughs> Come help me, help me. Come on, we got you, sister. Come on, we got you. You got it? All right, come on, one more, one more, one more. Come on, we got you, we got you, we got you. We got you. Just turn around, look at me, look at, look at, look at. Look at, look at. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You believe you're catching? <laughs> When we get in some tight situations, I saw what God did for my child, but uh, he, he, he ain't my size. He don't see what I see. He ain't been through what I've been through. Oh, I know Pastor talking all this tithing and all that, but Pastor ain't got the bill I got. He didn't see the letter I just 
saw. And she represents somebody whose faith had really been tested. Or somebody that's been hurt before. Or they've been let down before. Now they're having it hard to try to trust again. Can, can, can I talk to us? God wants us. See, see how she doing? God ain't saying that, but she just back away slowly. You good, sister. God wants us to have that childlike faith. To trust him. Because he's proven himself on every level in our lives. To be consistent. But we've got to make sure that we stay faithful and stay committed to God. Committed with the little I have. And when God blesses me, give me promotion, I'm going to be committed with the lot. Because I understand every level of my life, God has been there. He's been that consistent reminder. Come on, Father, I thank you for these in you that are in my, uh, uh, under my voice. Thank you for every young person. Thank you for every teenager. Thank you for every child, God. Thank you for every adult. Thank you for every business owner. Thank you for those that are aspiring to own businesses. Thank you for those that are moving up in the corporate world. God, we speak favor right now. God, this is our fruitful season. We trust you with the little that we have. And now we're able to trust you with the lot. God, we speak against every negative spirit that will come to try to get us to eat our seed during the time that we should be sowing seeds. Father, thank you for touching people to sow into our lives. Thank you for touching people placing them in our path to help our vision get from where it is to where you want it to be. God, we speak now to every business owner that they have more than enough. Thank you that our teenagers will do better financially than we did. God, give them creative ideas. Bless their minds. Bless their hands. Bless the connections that you're going to give them. Father, we speak it right now. That you're going to give them everything that their hearts desire. Let our young people live. Let them trust you, God. Let our adults, God, let us continue to have that childlike faith so that we can see everything that you have for us. We speak right now. We're going to keep doing fine because we'll trust you with the dime. We won't allow that dime to come between our relationship with you and the blessings that you have in store for us. We speak it right now, I think. Father, I thank you for a liberal spirit. Because you said that a liberal soul shall be made fat. God, thank you for giving us the desires of our hearts. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. It's in your son Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Let every glad heart say amen. Come on, look at somebody and tell them this is my fruitful season. No, 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 that was a hater. Look at somebody else tell them this is my fruitful season. Listen, I want to do this real quickly. I want to do kingdom news. We're going to do our communion as we leave, but I want to do our kingdom news and our giving. This is giving time. Come on, I want everybody. The information is there. Thank you. It's on the screen. I want everybody that's a tither, get your tithe in your hand. Thank you to those from the living room church that honored us on last month. They, they, they sold into it as well. Thank you so much. Kingdom builders, everybody get your tithe. The information is on the screen. I'm in a teaching series. I'm so proud of you. Sister Keisha works every Sunday, but made a commitment to take off on the first Sunday just to be in corporate worship because she heard us say, we want to see everybody that we can in corporate worship. We honor you so much and to each of you guys, people, everybody get your tithe together, get your seat. I'm so proud of my church right now. Listen to even those that are online that watch because I told you up front, we're going to be for the next several weeks teaching on giving, tithing, receiving. I told you what we're teaching, but you come, which lets me know that there's a desire to want to learn and grow. You want God to bless not just certain areas, but every area. And that makes me as a pastor so proud. Because you could say, I'll wait till this series is over and I get back in church. But you're so committed to your own personal growth, and that means so much to me. We're getting ready to put it in demonstration. I want everybody to get your tithe together. What is tithe, Pastor? It's 10%. It's that dime that we talked about. I'm convinced, convinced and convicted that everybody that loves God would tithe. Sometimes they don't understand the principle. So we set out to make sure we teach it as best we can. Get your tithe. If I made $700 on my check, $70 belong to God. 
I made $650, $65 belong to God. I made $1,000, $100 belong to God. I can't wait till I'm able to tithe $10,000. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm telling y'all again, I can't wait. I'm telling you again, I can't wait. I can't wait. And when it happens, my next move is going to be, God, let me tithe 10000 every month. I serve a God that owns it all. And I'm looking forward to that day. I want you to get your seed in your hand. Get your tithe, your offering in your hand. Don't forget the 2020. We ask that 20 people. We need 25 people that would give $100. Later in, I committed to give it 500 every first Sunday. Only the first Sunday I ask you to give me for the Kingdom Covenant Partners. It's the yellow envelopes like this. I ask that we get 20 more people that will trust God. This takes care of our mortgage, our insurance, and some other things. And we do that only once a month. On the first Sunday, I want everybody. I need to know who you are. Those of you that are doing it, you can do it online. Thank you. You can do it on Givelify. Thank you, Sister Cecilia. Text to give, cash out. Thank you, Sister Latoya. Thank you. I need is the yellow envelope that look like this, and we do this on the first Sunday. So if that's you, we need twelve more. Twelve more to those that are watching online. If that's you, let us know if you're one of those twelve. Let us know if you're one of those twelve. Hallelujah. We got some great things coming up. The giveaway a couple of weeks ago was a success because of your giving. And even some of you even gave even above and that brought even more items. We've got Fall Festival coming up in just a few weeks. Our young people are in charge the last Sunday. I'm telling you, we've got some great things in store. And all of it takes place because of our faithful giving. Come on, if that's you, I need 12 more people, 12 more people. 12 more, wherever you are, let us know who you are. Come on, get your seat together. And you can do that. I trust God. And I'm trusting you to be integral when it comes to that. Come on, get that seed together. We don't just give money here at Kingdom Builders, but I believe we give our seed an assignment. I thank you. That's where it says, when currency flows, the church have power. When currency flows, the church have power. And that's what we are. Come on, everybody got your seed? Come on. If you will, everybody get your offering, get your time together, stand on your feet with us. Come on, make sure nobody behind you, beside you, in front of you is sitting, but give them something. If you see them sitting they need an offering, give them something. Give them something. I want them to be able to give and participate in the giving. Come on, every young person, anybody that needs something, come on, I want everybody to have something to give. I know this for a fact, that we have to make sure that we teach and train them ourselves. Because I want them to have more. I, I don't know how you feel about it, but I want my sons to have more money at my age than they did, than I did. That's right. I do. God knows I do. Amen. That's right. And I want them to have the wisdom I have now with it. <laughs> don't just get it and blow it. Use wisdom. I want them to go. Anybody, come on. Everybody, rest on your feet. Get your tithe. Get your offering. Anybody don't have an offering that needs something to give? Let me see your hand. All right. Everybody has something good. Good. Come on, let's give our seat an assignment. Speak after me. I'm a tither. Come on, I need everybody to say it like you mean it. I'm a tither. I gladly take the tithe out of my house and bring them into the storehouse. Today, I confess the windows of heaven blessings over my life. I'm a cheerful giver. I give to the work of God and the man of God. And because I do so, my God shall supply all of my needs. Come on, look at somebody and say, this week. No, 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 look at somebody and say, this week, I expect unexplainable blessings. Come on, look at them, tell them, favor is on my life. Where is it coming from? Say, favor from the north, favor from the south, favor from the east, and favor from the west. Say, God, give me favor with somebody that can bless me. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, bring your tithe, bring your offering. Don't forget our summer change for our kids, our teens. Come on, get that change. The bucket is here. Thank you to those that are giving. Your kingdom coming in partners as well. Thank you, son.
have already given online on Cash App and Givelify and text to give. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't forget our summer change here. Has everyone been served? So I'm still trying. Has everyone been served? Father, bless the gifts and the givers. Receive our gifts as a sweet smell of Savior in your nostrils. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Father, thank you for a 100 fold return on our increase. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To those that are still getting it together, you can do that. I want to go through our kingdom news real quick because we're going to prepare. At this time, Minister Brandon is going to be preparing to pass out our communion cups so we can participate together. But let's look at the screen. I want to go over the kingdom news with you real quickly. I'll make sure that you get these for today. Don't forget, here it is. Our KBB Bless Me recipient for today. Yes, for today is Sister Tiffany Wells. She's our $50 KBB Bless Me recipient today. Come on, y'all. Let's say amen like it's, like it's your time to get the $50. Well, she don't want it. She's... <laughs> All right, come on one more time for Sister Tiffany. Come on, here we go. Listen, don't forget uh, our fall festival. I need young people, teenagers, our youth, and parents, listen to me. On October the 31st, our youth and teens will be in charge of the service. Minister Stephanie is leading that. So uh, our dancers will be ministering. Uh, some of our young people will be speaking and saying different things. Uh, the youth choir praise team so forth will be uh, ministering on that day. I need all of us to not only be here in support, but there's some things in preparation, some rehearsals and things that you're going to be hearing about. Let's make sure we do our part to get them here so that they can put their best foot forward. They're in top charge of the entire service on the 31st. And immediately following service, when we do the benediction, we're going into our fall festival. We're going into our fall festival. Thank God for Pastor Alex in the Living Room Church. We'll be joining together that day, even the fall festival, to make it a success. Their young people and kids uh, will be uniting together. This is just the first of many times, but I'm looking forward to it. So the last Sunday, which is Halloween, but hallelujah night, a fall festival for us. They got some things they're going to be doing outside and so forth. So I'm looking forward to it. So parents, we need your help. There it is. We need all parents to please get two big bags of candy. Now let, let me tell you what two big bags of candy is. All right, two big bags are not the, the kind like this. If it can fit like this, that's not the big bag. All right. So Stephen said it's three dollar bag. We want the real big candy. The, the, oh, the, the twenty dollar bag. All right. <laughs> The one from saying, all right, parents, we need your help. We're going to always go above and beyond. We'll have more food, uh, the games, activities, snacks. We'll have plenty, and we're going to have more candy, but you can help us. And what we need your help is if every parent can bring at least two big bags of candy by Sunday, October the 17th. Not this coming Sunday, but by October the 17th, although you can bring it early if you like, okay? Every parent, bring two big bags of candy to help us with our fall festival. All right? Don't forget the ways to give those that are giving. Uh, make sure you see that. And on today, listen, the replay is at 3 p.m. The rewind is at 6 p.m. on tonight. Uh, if you miss anything, you can see that. And then tomorrow morning manner. Uh, our nugget and so forth. I, I'm not sure who is it tomorrow. Who, who is it? Who's on schedule tomorrow for the morning? I know Minister Stephanie. Anybody got a chance to see our nuggets on last Monday? Good, good. Minister Stephanie was on all day last Monday, and I think Minister Gail was before that. So I'm not sure if it's Elder Freeman or Minister Brandon, but it'll be at 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and then we'll be doing a nightcap at 9 p.m. Uh, on tomorrow night on the on the church Facebook page. Make sure you're there uh, and or on YouTube. Catch your morning manner and your nugget. Come on, y'all. Let's get ready to uh, worship God through our communion. It's just old school, y'all. We know this together. 
We're going in peace. I pray the blessings of God be over your life. And then on Sunday, we dig a little bit deeper. As we're leaving, the KPB bless me bucket is on the chair there. Make sure you put $2 in there on your way out the door. Come on, the blood, the blood. Y'all ready? Come on. It reaches. Come on, where does it reach? Where does it reach? Come on, we're talking about the blood. Consider yourselves dismissed. Come on, and it flows, and it flows, and it flows. And it Wow, listen family, listen, we, we're just getting done today and I, it is our prayer that you were blessed by the message, moving from being fruitless to being fruitful. I'm excited, I enjoyed the teaching. Uh, one of the things I, I'm really proud about here at the church is that not only do our adults get involved, but our teens, some of our teens get involved in the messages and things that are going on. They were very attentive today, even used a few of them doing our examples and they helped uh, in every area of ministry. They pretty much help and get involved and I'm grateful to God for that. But I don't want you to just take my word, uh, but I want you to just hear from some of them, some of the things. You can see we're outside now, just getting out. So people are kind of walking and, and uh, we're just enjoying fellowship. But I want you to take their word word because uh, I want to find out not just what I got today because I learned even while teaching but I want you to hear what they yes, learned or what they got out of it that's right that's that's minister Jimmy coming out of the door uh, as loud as he want to be all the time he is who he is but listen I want the teens to tell you what they got out of it. don't just take my word listen to them all right listen what, what did you get out of it? I know Sister Shayla was using an example uh, Sister Mickey High School, oh my goodness, uh, Sister Alana High School, and Javon. But I want you to just find out from them a nugget that they got out of it on today, and I pray you get something out of it. So tell us, Shay, what you got? Um, when you give, you have a great opportunity to receive, sometimes even more than what you put in. Wow, wow. So something I learned from here is one of the principles where it said you can't have the fruit without the tree and the tree without the seed. I got, uh, when you um when you want good things to happen in you, you have to speak it into existence. Like right? whatever good you want to happen in you, you have to see it to happen first before it's even happen. You need the seed in order to see the fruit. The fruit is evidence that a tree has been planted. I'm grateful uh, to God, and uh, I'm looking forward to next week. Next week we go even deeper. Make sure you tune in. Same time, same station, and I really believe you're going to be blessed. And uh, until then, let's keep building the kingdom, one person at a time. Let's build. I fall to my knees and I say that I'm 